In a game-changing announcement, Porsche CEO Oliver Bloom has dropped a revelation that sent tremors through the automobile industry. Porsche will no longer be utilizing dealerships for its distribution. While this may seem like a radical departure from the norm, it's a step into the future for the iconic car brand and one that promises to reshape how luxury vehicles are sold. Porsche, a brand synonymous with luxury, power, and innovation, has always been a trendsetter in the automotive world. Known for its timeless classics like the 911 and the Panamera, the company has historically combined German engineering with sheer beauty. These automobiles aren't just machines, they're art on wheels, coveted by enthusiasts and casual drivers alike. Yet even for a company that thrives on pushing boundaries, Oliver Bloom's announcement came as a surprise to many. To understand the magnitude of this decision, it's essential to consider the role dealerships have played in the auto industry. Historically, dealerships acted as the crucial intermediary between automakers and customers. They were the places where customers could experience the look, feel, and smell of new cars. It's where test drives began, deals were negotiated, and brand loyalties were forged. Big names such as Ford, Toyota, and Honda have built vast networks of these dealerships, sprawling across nations ensuring that a customer is never too far from their next potential purchase. Yet, Porsche's decision to abandon this age-old system isn't without precedent. We've seen a similar disruptive approach from Tesla, the electric vehicle giant led by Elon Musk. From its inception, Tesla eschewed the traditional dealership model in favor of company-owned showrooms and online direct sales. Their rationale was simple. Why involve a middleman when you can control the entire customer experience from inquiry to delivery. Given Tesla's resounding success, it's no surprise that others in the industry have taken notice. However, Porsche's pivot away from dealerships isn't merely a copy-paste of Tesla's strategy. It's an evolution shaped by the unique ethos and demands of the Porsche brand and its discerning customer base. Porsche owners don't just buy a vehicle, they invest in an experience, a legacy. By cutting out the dealer, Porsche aims to curate this experience more intimately, ensuring that every touchpoint reflects the brand's prestige. The direct-to-consumer model could benefit Porsche in several ways. Firstly, it gives them greater control over pricing, potentially eliminating the haggling that many consumers find off-putting. Second, by managing the sales process from end to end, Porsche can ensure a uniformly high standard of customer service. This direct relationship with the consumer can also provide invaluable data and feedback, allowing Porsche to be more agile and responsive to market demands. Yet, as with all seismic shifts, there are potential pitfalls. Dealerships, for all their perceived flaws, offer local expertise and relationships that can't easily be replicated. For many consumers, a dealership is more than just a showroom. It's a trusted advisor, a service center, and a community hub. The tactile experience of exploring a car, feeling its leather seats, hearing the rev of its engine. These are sensations that a virtual interface, no matter how advanced, might struggle to replicate. Moreover, other automakers will be watching Porsches move closely. Brands like Audi, BMW, and Mercedes-Benz, which directly compete in the luxury space, may consider if such a model is viable for them or if they'll stick to the tried-and-true dealership structure. Their reactions could determine whether Porsche's move is seen as an industry-leading vision or an ambitious gamble. Beyond the immediate realm of luxury cars, the broader industry is already grappling with transitions on several fronts. Electrification, digitization, and autonomous driving are trends that are rapidly reshaping what it means to be an automaker in the 21st century. In this transformative landscape, Porsche's bold move may be a precursor to the kind of structural changes that lie ahead for the sector at large. Evolving customer preferences play a significant role in this shift. Today's consumers are accustomed to the convenience and immediacy afforded by digital platforms, whether it's streaming their favorite shows, ordering groceries, or even purchasing homes. As e-commerce continues to gain traction across diverse industries, the appeal of a seamless online car buying experience becomes ever more evident. This new paradigm, if executed correctly, could offer unprecedented convenience. Imagine customizing your Porsche down to the finest detail, from the shade of its exterior to the stitching on the seats, all from the comfort of your living room. Then, after a short wait, it's delivered to your doorstep, gleaming and ready to roar. 
But while the digital realm offers unparalleled convenience, the human touch remains irreplaceable, especially for a brand as storied as Porsche. It's one thing to customize a car online, and quite another to feel the passion and expertise of a brand representative guiding you through that process. Perhaps that's why, rather than going fully digital, there's talk of Porsche considering brand experience centers spaces where potential buyers can immerse themselves in the brand's legacy, undergo virtual simulations, and even test drive a range of models. Such centers, if they materialize, will echo the ethos of Apple's flagship stores, where product purchase is just one aspect of the consumer's journey. It's an experiential voyage, allowing individuals to feel, firsthand, the magic that the brand promises. And in the case of Porsche, this magic is intertwined with speed, innovation, and a rich racing heritage. Another crucial angle to consider is the after-sales service. Dealerships have traditionally been the go-to point for servicing and maintenance. Without them in the equation, Porsche will need a robust strategy to ensure their cars, known for their performance and reliability, receive the care they deserve. This might mean dedicated service centers, mobile service units, or even partnerships with trusted third-party providers. In this transformative moment, Porsche's move might also illuminate the broader challenges and opportunities faced by the automotive industry. With global environmental concerns becoming increasingly pressing, sustainability has emerged as a cornerstone for most car manufacturers. This emphasis on green technology and innovation has led to an explosive growth in electric vehicles and hybrid models. As brands grapple with their identities in this shifting landscape, they're discovering that changing the car is often easier than changing the buying experience. Now, juxtapose the conventional with the modern. On one side, you have the cherished, almost ceremonial experience of walking into a car showroom, the scent of fresh rubber and leather filling the air, and the tangible thrill of sliding into the driver's seat of a gleaming new car. On the other, you have the ultra-modern digital domain, where convenience, customization, and efficiency reign supreme. It's a domain where algorithms can predict what you desire before you articulate it, where augmented reality can conjure the feel of a car in your driveway without it physically being there, and where one click can set in motion the intricate dance of supply chains to deliver your dream car to your door. Yet for Porsche, it's not about replacing the old with the new, but integrating the two to curate a unique, holistic experience for the discerning buyer. It's about understanding that while the world is zooming towards a digital future, there's a nostalgia, a romance, a tactile richness that many still crave. That's probably why, even as they chart a bold course towards a dealerless model, they aren't dismissing the intrinsic value of the human touch and tangible experience. Consider the success of brands like Amazon, which began as a purely online retailer, but has since ventured into brick and mortar spaces with Amazon Books and Amazon Go. They recognize that the future isn't purely digital, but a blend that leverages the best of both worlds. In a similar vein, Porsche's move might be seen as embracing a fidgetal approach, a synthesis of the physical and digital. Another dimension that can't be ignored is the global perspective. While a direct-to-consumer model might be well-received in markets like North America or Europe, how will it fare in emerging markets or culturally distinct regions? In places where relationships, face-to-face -face negotiations, and the tradition of kicking the tires are deeply ingrained, will Porsche's new model resonate or will it require regional adaptations? The ripple effects of Porsche's decision extend beyond just car sales. Local economies, jobs, and the very fabric of many communities are intertwined with dealerships. The potential phase-out might necessitate new strategies for job retraining, community engagement, and local economic development. In conclusion, Porsche's move to eliminate dealerships is emblematic of a brand in motion, one that respects its past but isn't bound by it. As they navigate this journey, they're not just redefining how cars are sold, but also what it means to be a consumer a car enthusiast, and indeed a part of the ever-evolving tapestry of the automobile world. The road ahead is uncharted, but if there's one brand that thrives on pushing limits and exploring new frontiers, it's Porsche. And as always, the world will be watching, eager to join the ride. Thank you for sticking with me all the way to the end. Please like, comment, and subscribe. 
and make sure the notification bell is turned on so you don't miss a video.